could you build a business on multiple areas of passion? That's the question for today's video. So one of my uh, audience members, uh, you know who you are. I'm going to keep you uh, confidential unless you want to comment below and say who, who, who you are. Feel free to do that. Uh, wrote to me. This is, what, this is what he wrote. My passion, my dream is to help people lead a happy life. My focus is on helping people achieve fulfillment in three important areas of their life, relationship, finances, and career. So this is what I want to talk about on my blog, he wrote. As I've read and researched, I see that many experts recommend tailoring down to just one niche, focusing on specific issues, thereby warning against taking on a wide range of topics. I perfectly understand that these three areas, relationship, money, and career, are so wide. In fact, each one has countless subtopics. But what I'm trying to do is to link the three together because I believe that they are the core factors that affect people's happiness and overall well-being. If people do well in these areas, they're more likely to excel in other things. So the question is whether or not it's wise to build a business based on multiple passions. And if you uh, can relate to that, uh, I welcome you to comment below and let us know what your multiple passions are. Um, so here are my thoughts on that. Most of the time, and, and I most of the, most of the time I've been in business, ten years. I have agreed with the conventional marketing advice that you should niche down into one thing and just focus on that. And the reason why experts recommend that, there's so many reasons why. I mean, one reason is because that way the, the audience remembers you more. And by the way, I'm niching down on being the guy who makes video with Orange Cat. That's my new niche. <laughs> Actually, Mango is a is a geriatric cat, and I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to jump up here. Uh, so enjoy him while he's while he's around and jumping up on me for these videos. <laughs> and when he's no longer able to jump up, then then my niche is going to change. Right? <laughs> so. Uh, I used to agree with that idea of just, just doing one thing because you'll be more memorable. People tend to remember, oh, yeah, you're the specialist in that one thing. And uh, being a specialist means that you're more credible more quickly because people go, oh, yeah, well, if you focus on that one thing, you must be really good at that one thing. And that's what the audience's assumptions are. Uh, so that's one benefit is being able to be remembered more easily by an audience. Another benefit is collaboration. Um, because when you focus on one thing, I am the guy who makes videos with orange cats and talks about marketing, uh, then the guy who makes marketing videos with a dog doesn't have to feel as threatened because he and I might collaborate. Maybe he has some cat lovers in his audience and who would enjoy watching some of my videos with the cat. I'm, I'm being facetious, but you know what I mean? When you have a focus, it's easier to collaborate with others. There's less competition in the example of uh, the one who emailed me, uh, you know, if he's focusing on finances, relationships, and career, then he is by default in competition. Other f financial coaches will feel uh, threatened by him. Relationship coaches will feel threatened by him. Career counselors will also feel threatened by him. So he's, he's, he's going to create, not enemies, but he's going to create anxiety and, and competition in all these huge industries, right? So that's why people also say focus, because then you can more easily collaborate. If I am the money coach for midlife entrepreneurs, then I can collaborate with you. If you just talk about relationship stuff with midlife people, then you can bring me onto your podcast, onto your video channel, onto your blog to talk about mon the money side. And I can bring you to talk about the relationship. So there's more collaboration opportunities when you specify and focus on one area. However, okay. And I'll say one more benefit before I say why I no longer require people to focus on one area. So that's that's the punchline here. I want to give that to you first. You don't have to just focus. You can integrate as many areas as you want. Okay, so that's that's where I'm going. But first, I want to talk about why people say these things about focus on and niching down. So I've talked about two benefits. The third benefit of niching down, which I do believe is really true, is that it allows you to focus your time and energy on one area which allows you to become excellent in that one area faster okay so if i just and and um i'll i'll give my own example when i started creating consistent content 
um, I guess this is now three years that I've been doing consistent content. I'm in business longer than that, but in consistent content for three years now, um, I was going to focus on three areas. I was going to do authentic marketing. I was going to talk about joyful productivity also, and I was going to talk about healthy money. So these three areas, where I was going to talk about these things, I was going to integrate some of these things, and I did. I created a lot of videos and articles about all three areas. I even wrote a book on two of those areas thus far. Uh, authentic marketing and, and joyful productivity. Now, over the past three years, I have noticed that my audience much more appreciates my content about authentic marketing, and that they're, they're much more likely to buy my courses and s hire me to talk about authentic marketing and not so much joyful productivity and definitely not about healthy money. Now, I'm not saying those two are bad topics. There are people who are thriving. Uh, productivity coaches or productivity experts. There are also people who are thriving in talking about finances. It's just that for whatever reason, the way I talk about it or my audience or whatever reason it is, the, the alignment between my uh, conversation and my audience's wants uh, means that the authentic marketing was the most interesting topic, the best alignment between what I can give you and what you want from me specifically. So I've noticed that over the past three years, so that's why I've started to focus more and more on authentic marketing as, as, my, as my focus area. So the reality is that no matter how broad you are, you may eventually decide that you want to focus on one area because you're getting the most feedback on it. Because as you, as you uh, will realize, creating content and not getting feedback is not fun, right? So when you create a bunch of content, you will notice what pieces of content you get the most feedback from, and that's where you'll tend to want to, you'll tend to be motivated to focus on those areas because you get some feedback on it. So, um, right, if you focus on all all kinds of areas and then you find one area, you just keep keep getting good good vibes from it, and 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 also you keep making sales in that area. That's the other thing to focus on. Where are you getting feedback on your content? Where are you making sales that you create products and services or introduce other people's products and services on these different areas? Where are you getting feedback on? I just talked to a, a business part, a business colleague of mine. We've been working together for, for many years now. And he said something interesting. He said, George, I've noticed my audience most appreciates when I bring to them services and courses about how to become better as a coach. Not so much services and products about how to become a uh, uh, how to become better in their business or in their marketing, and he learned that about his audience. So he's he realizes that you know he probably shouldn't be promoting my marketing stuff so much to his audience anymore. And I totally respect that, right? That's why every audience there is uniqueness between you and your audience. That's going to be different between me and my audience, and that's for you to discover as you create content. And, and as you introduce products and services. Okay, now, let me get to that punchline I was promising. Why am I saying, therefore, why am I still saying that it's okay for you to be unfocused in your areas, to be covering whatever you want? Okay, this is why I say that. Because I want, I don't, a lot of people listen to marketing experts and say that, well, marketing expert, you must be right, so therefore, even if I don't want to, I'm going to focus into this one area and be really niched down and be really specific because I'm supposed to only target, you know, women who are in their 50s, who are, you know, struggling with a, a, a divorce and, and, you know, whatever it is area you, you decide to really niche down on. I disagree with that now because it's too early for you to do that. If you're not sure whether you should focus, if you're even asking the question, should I focus down on one area, you shouldn't focus down on one area. You're too early. It's too early. You need to create more content on all the areas that you care about. Talk about everything. And talk about, talk about everything specifically in each of the areas and talk about the integration of the multiple areas. Talk about everything. So back to the person who is talking about they want to focus on relationships finance and career. Great. Talk about, create some articles, create some videos, whatever you want to do, you know, whether it's articles or videos or both. 
Talk about some things on relationships. Talk about some things on finances. Talk about some things on career. Talk about some things on the intersection of career and finances, about the intersection of finances and relationships, about career and relationships. Talk about all kinds of combinations because I want to know what the world responds best to from you. It may be that you're just brilliant when it comes to talking about the connection, the combination between career and finances. I don't know. Maybe you're brilliant in talking about the combination between finances and career. I don't know. You don't know yet what combination is right for you. So you should not focus yet. You see, that's too early. You're too early to focus. So talk about it all. Try different combinations. Buy Facebook ads so you can really get the content out there so you can test, right? You need to have enough of an audience to test with all these different combinations. And then eventually you may discover that the world wants you to focus in on one area or focus in on a combination of some areas. At that point, it then makes sense for you to focus because you'll be naturally wanting to focus. You'll, you won't want to keep making, let's for example say that you end up making a bunch of content on all areas and then nobody responds to you about relationships for whatever reason. Like just people don't care when you talk about it. Maybe you don't talk about an interesting way. Maybe it's the fact that you're a man or a woman. I don't know. I don't know what the reasons are. It really is, you know, interestingly, I'll, I'll just give you another example. Um, I have a lot of women in my audience and I don't, I'm not sure why. I'm a man, right? But some reason I resonate with a lot of women. I personally wish it was more mixed. I wish I had more of a mix of men and women. Uh, I also wish I had, you know, I, I resonate a lot with people of a certain generation. I don't know why. I am not in that generation, but I resonate a lot. So it, I don't know why. But, but as a result of getting a lot of feedback from certain types of people and on certain topics, that makes me naturally want to focus. And same thing with you. You're going to find yourself naturally wanting to say more what people are giving you feedback on. That's just the reality of things. So in the beginning, go with your passion, right? In the beginning, don't limit yourself. Just talk, just express, just, you know, uh, share whatever learnings that you are going through. And then you'll realize, oh, the world wants me to do more of that. Oh, well, then you're going to naturally do more of that. So anyway, I hope that that is helpful. And that's why I no longer uh, re require or restrict my clients to do one area. No, no, no. No, you shouldn't do one area. If you're not even sure, do every area. Do everything. And then see what the world finds most beneficial from you specifically. And then you might decide to do and, or. You might realize that you might find an audience who likes you talking about everything. And isn't that wonderful? Whatever you're passionate about, you talk about it, your audience loves it. Then what happens is you end up building an audience who simply likes you. I mean, all of us eventually gets there, right? All of us eventually builds an audience who just likes our personality, just likes you know, how we look, how we sound, our take on things. And that's great. That's great. You can build an audience like that. And still, you're going to notice that when you offer products and services, they will take you up more on certain products than other products. So, 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 so build an audience however you want to build it, talking about whatever you want, and then try offering product and services in the various topics and see what sells more. And of course, whatever sells more, you're going to be naturally motivated to sell more of that kind of thing in the future. So whatever it is, start broad and just let your, the world tell you what to narrow down on if, if you get that kind of feedback. So I hope this is helpful and uh, thanks for those of you who were able to join me live. Captain, thanks, Suzanne, Michelle, thanks so much. Um, open to your comments and your questions. As you know, I've been creating more and more videos based on your questions and your situations. So feel free to um, post on my page uh, your questions, your situation, and uh, perhaps I'll, I'll make a video and write a blog post addressing you as well. So take care. I hope this is helpful and uh, have a great day.